The year is 1962. America has just sent an astronaut to space and an engineer by the name of Buckminster Fuller has just patented the tensile integrity structure. He looks to the empty blue sky, its fluffy white clouds and thinks, It's free real estate. The question is, are flying cities really possible? Let's find out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see more found and explained stories. Whilst we have come a long way in aviation technology, with colossal aircraft now taking to the skies like the Airbus A380, could we go even bigger and make an entire city take flight? Truth is, the technology is closer than you think. Originally, flying cities had appeared in fiction such as the giant's floating castle in the ancient tale of Jack and the Beanstalk and Laputa in Gulliver's Travels. Humans have always been excited by the idea of leaving the ground forever, but back then the concept of heavier-than-air flight seemed impossible, let alone suspending a whole city. But then during the 1920s, a science fiction author named Hugo Gernsback speculated that one day we would actually have floating cities. He suggested that in 10,000 years, give or take a few centuries, the city the size of New York will float several miles above the surface of the earth, where the air is cleaner and pure and free from disease-carrying bacteria. What is unique about his take was that instead of being powered by magic, the city would fly due to science. He proposed that there would be four gigantic generators to shoot earthward electrical rays which by reaction with the earth produce a force to keep the city aloft. This of course is beyond our current understanding of gravity, but the idea of approaching this with science was cutting edge for the time. It wasn't until the 1960s when this theory got a leap forward. Enter in our friend Buckminster Fuller with his game-changing tensile integrity technology. Let me explain exactly what this is. A tensile integrity structure is a system of isolated components under compression that are inside a network of continuous tension. In plain terms, think of a triangle of supports that split the load throughout a structure under tension, which is able to support incredibly high loads. In fact, they get stronger the bigger the structure gets. A common form of a tensile integrity structure is a geodesic dome. With this technology in mind, the architects Buckminster Fuller and Soji Sadao proposed the construction of a 1 mile diameter, 1.6 kilometers wide, thermal airship, dubbed Cloud 9, as the first floating city. So how would this exactly work? Well, imagine that this sphere or dome stretched over a city. Sure, it would be massive and weigh millions of pounds, but in fact the air under the dome would have more mass than the city itself. The rise in temperature of even one degree, if spread over enough air mass, would actually lift the dome and the city aloft into the sky. Fuller and Sado envisioned that the Cloud 9 would float freely amongst the Earth's atmosphere giving residents and passengers a migratory lifestyle. They believe that it might be a partial solution to the depletion of non-renewable resources and stop the problems of overpopulation. But why was this never built? Well, there is still plenty of land on Earth for rich people to escape to, and because the minimum size of a floating city needs to be so big, it would be enormously expensive for very little advantage. Plus, let's not even get started on the rules and regulations of a flying city that travels all over the world. Whilst we may never see flying cities here on Earth, they are a great solution for planets like Venus. The surface of our second planet from the sun is inhospitable for humans, but the flying city model might work well up in its clouds. At 50 kilometers above the surface, the atmosphere of the planet will match the same pressure as the Earth and have the same temperature range of 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Essentially, we would only need air to breathe like a scuba diver. And thanks to the much larger amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, the city would be much more buoyant. It would require less sunlight to float, even though the planet, being close to the sun, gets so much more. 
In fact, Venus offers one of the better candidates for an off-world colony rather than the Moon or even Mars. Well, thanks for watching today's video. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more weekly found and explained videos on this channel. And do let me know down in the comments if you would like to live on a floating city. Thanks.